In this video, we're going to talk about how to generate power from the different parts of the body. We're going to start by talking about the feet. So, the feet, all we're doing with the feet and the legs, basically, is transferring weight. So there's a weight transfer. If you're hitting a forehand, then you're going to always transfer from the back foot to the front foot. That's just all it has to do. Okay, so you're essentially loading weight on the back foot by bending down your knee and your hip, and you're going to explode forward by pushing off that back foot, to, hence transferring your weight and your mass up to your front foot. So your back leg will either pivot onto your toe, or it'll even leave the ground at some times, or maybe both feet are going to leave the ground, but that's basically what you're doing. Now sometimes you're going to be in positions where you're um, kind of in a very open stance, where both uh, are kind of loaded, Still, you're going to load the, the foot that's either furthest back or if they're pretty even, you're going to load both feet and then try to explode forward to push that momentum forward. So without engaging anything else, let's just look at what that looks like. So with the forehand, okay, I'm not going to prepare nothing like that. So I've got a forehand, load, transfer. That's it. Load, transfer. Load, transfer. I've got a backhand, one-handed backhand. Load by bending the knee, transfer. Load, transfer. Or two-handed backhand, load, transfer. Same kind of thing, same deal, okay? Obviously, this is demonstrating using a, using a very close stance, but that's the most linear stance we have, okay? Um, next, the primary source of power generally actually comes from the core. And this is where that coiling um, happens. Okay, so basically we uh, have a load as well. So on the legs we load by bending down so that we're able to then explode off the muscles by, you know, through uh, flexion. With the core, the way we load is actually by counter rotating. Okay, so if we're going to be hitting a forehand, we're going to want to rotate around this way. Okay, rotating basically counterclockwise, which means to load, we actually have to rotate clockwise first. And this is going to be based on your range of motion. So you have to experiment to see how far can you rotate. Um, a simple way to, to feel this is just to hold out your hands and rotate all the way to your right, then rotate all the way to your left as far as you can comfortably go. And that's basically your range of motion. Notice how the hips rotate, but mostly it's it's the shoulders and above the core, okay? So all that's gonna happen with the core is you rotate to coil and load, and then you explode by rotating back out the opposite direction. So if you can just feel that, and just get the sense of it. And then you can put those two components together. Load the leg and coil at the same time. So it looks like this. And then you're going to transfer your weight by pushing off your back foot and uncoiling simultaneously. So this is actually the vast majority of the power that comes in the stroke. Same thing with the left hand or the back hand. Load the back leg, coil, uncoil. And just get used to using the body in this way, engaging your core and engaging your legs. Now let's talk about the um, hand, okay? Because the hand is actually a critical part of where a lot of power comes from, and it comes from pronation. But let's explain what pronation actually is in tennis. So typically, pronation is just this motion here, okay? But pronation, proper pronation in tennis, actually involves a bit of wrist flexion as well. So when the wrist is up like this, your hand is up, this is wrist extension, okay? Where you're engaging the extensor muscles on the top of the forearm. Wrist flexion is when your fist is down like this. Supination is when you open up this way. Pronation is when you turn inwards with your thumb, okay? So what we're basically doing is we start from a state of wrist extension and we're supinated. Then you're going to pronate 
and flex wrist flexion at the same time. So this action is happening. So it's not just pronation, it's also wrist flexion as well. And I watched a lot of videos, all the pros do this. Okay, and you get a lot of power this way. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so you can see this is a very small motion here, but look how much motion that translates to if I just add the racket. So my forehand grip, notice my wrist is extend in extension. If I do simply pronation, you get this windshield wiper effect. The, this is great for topspin, but you don't get any extra plow through from this. But look what happens when I add wrist flexion. Now, the racket is moving in a forward direction as well. And look how much distance the racket head is moving. It's moving several feet on this arc, okay? So now, when does that happen? If you watch the pros, when they're hitting the ball, right before they strike, the racket is always like, you know, perpendicular to the net, okay? Then what happens at the very last moment before striking the ball is you'll see they'll actually engage their wrist flexion and pronation, which then snaps the racket very quickly from this position up to the contact point with the ball, and then even through that. So from here to here, look how little motion is happening in the wrist, but how much motion is happening in the racket face itself. So that's the last component, okay? Which just feels like kind of like you're turning your hand, just snapping it like that. Okay, that's all pronation is. I'm in wrist extension and I go to wrist flexion. One way you can practice this is start with your wrist palm facing up, you're in extension, turn, palm facing down, you pronated, and wrist flexion, extension, flexion, extension, flexion, extension, flexion. Okay, that's a little bit exaggerated from what you actually do, but that'll give you a nice sensation of what that snap feels like. So, the last component is the um, what the arm is doing. The arm is actually very simple. So, essentially the basics is that when you are turning the body, which is, means you're coiling and you're loading your core, you just want to get your arm behind your body somewhere. Some pros go all the way to directly behind them, it's their six o'clock position. If, if the directly in front of you towards the net is 12 o'clock, this will be six o'clock. Most pros will actually recommend being around five o'clock, somewhere around here, okay? And you'll see some in the women's tour will actually get even behind the back even further. Stay where you're kind of comfortable. You can see I've got a high position with my racket here, but you could even start with a low position. The difference is you're not gonna to get top spin starting from a lower position, whereas um, starting up, the racket will naturally fall first and then come back up, as opposed to starting low and just coming through the ball. So whatever you're doing is up to you. Now, so let's take a look at what the swing path looks like a little bit, okay? All I'm gonna do is my wrist is really to my side here. You can see if I, I take out the um, I take out the, the core rotation, I'm just here, and all this is happening is I'm allowing the rocket to drop. When I drop it, I'm pulling the butt of the, the racket like this, okay? So notice this means that my wrist is an extension and, um, and, I'm allow and my palm is basically sort of upwards and that allows the racket to be traveling in this direction here. I pull and then all I do is I do my wrist flexion and pronation and I finish my stroke here. That's all it is. So I'm, ex I'm prepared, drop the racket face, pull and snap. That's all it is. Pull, snap, and it's just one fluid motion. And it should be very loose. You don't have to do much with this. So notice how I'm not using hardly any effort. The energy comes from that wrist snap that happens because basically the, the uh, racket is accelerating from this point, okay? So you wanna think very loose arm, tight legs, strong legs, tight core, strong core, okay? Very loose shoulder, loose arm, and just a wrist snap at the end. So going slowly, it looks like this. So I'm gonna load my back leg. I'm gonna turn at the same time, really coil. I'm going to 
extend back so to make sure my, my arm is extended. Then I'm going to transfer from my weight forward. At the same time, I'm going to really rotate with energy here. The rack drops, I pull, and I snap, and I turn. Okay, so it looks like this. Just nice and easy. And just feeling that simple snap. If I do it with no snap, no wrist snap, look how much slower the racket is. Okay, now same speed. And that just has the wrist snap at the end. So a lot of energy happens right there. And now if I actually coil with power, this is without wrist snap. And this is with wrist snap. So you can see how much um, energy is generated with that. Anyways, it's actually pretty simple, as long as your grip is correct. And uh, that's how you generate power in the forehand.